Hey kids, it's Mr. Adam. Books can provide some of the best adventures you'll ever go on. Today we're reading The Buddy Bench by Patty Brozo. Class dismissed, called Miss Mellon when the recess bell rang. Her students ran out, one loud, happy gang. They didn't waste time. Recess was too short. They started right in with their games and their sport. Some boys climbed a mound playing King of the Hill. But though he stood near, not one noticed Will. Molly said to Brienne, let's play follow the leader. They walked right by Emma, but just didn't see her. As Cooper watched hide and seek from a tree, he thought to himself, why does no one seek me? Three kids played soldier with a make-believe fort as Sloan looked on from the basketball court. Seven kids were clowns and they acted quite silly. They paraded right past, but no one saw Lily. Jerome watched four kids playing blind man's bluff. Why can't they see me? Aren't I big enough? Three boys played with kites that flew high in the air. While Gage sat and wondered, doesn't anyone care? Then one dancing kite dropped out of the sky. And when Jake went to find it, Gabe held it up high. Want to join us, Jake asked, before recess is done? How come you're just watching? That can't be much fun. It's my leg, said Gabe. I can't run in a cast, so I've never been picked. Not even last. Come play with us anyway. There's time to spare. Wait a minute, said Gabe. I'll be right there. Gabe hobbled to Will and tap-tapped his shoulder. Come and join us, he said, before recess is over. I'm new here, said Will, and today's my first day. No one but you has asked me to play. Well, help us keep this kite in the air. Okay, said Will, I'll be right there. Then Will went to Emma, and Emma to Sloane, each asking the next why she was alone. There are holes in my pants and my shoes, Emma said. I don't fit in, and her face turned bright red. It's hard, said Sloan, to know what to say. I'm too scared to ask, but I do want to play. Come join us, said Will. There's no time to spare. Wait, said the girls. We'll be right there. They ran over to Cooper and said, What about you? We're going to have fun. Can't you play too? When I t talk, explained Cooper, my words get t tangled. What I want to s say ends up all m mangled. So what? Come and play, the two girls said. I'll come in a m minute. You go on a he head. Then Cooper asked Lily, and Lily asked Jerome. How come each of them was alone? Lily told Cooper, it's always the same. I'm used to just watching. I'm no good at games. When you're small, said Jerome, and the game is all tied, nobody wants you to be on their side. Come and play, Cooper said, D don't hang back and wait. Let's make some new friends. It's n never too late. But recess was over. The bell rang once more, and Miss Mellon's students ran for the door. Miss Mellon, Will asked, how could we say, without using words, that we all want to play? Sometimes we're too shy, too sad, or too proud. How can we ask without asking out loud? Miss Mellon said, what you need is a seat, to wait for a friend or a buddy to meet. A buddy bench, Miss Mellon's class all agreed, and we'll m make it ourselves, Cooper decreed. So they borrowed a hammer, a saw, and a wrench, and started to work on their own special bench. When it was finished, they all were filled with pride. Each child wore a smile that was nine inches wide. We think it's just perfect, the students all said, with hands that are colored blue, yellow, and red. They put their new bench in the very best place, 
under the climbing tree right at its base. Now everyone knows when they're feeling left out, where to find friends without any doubt. And the words on the bench that they made on their own say buddy bench equals nobody alone. The end. Thanks for reading a book with us today. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of Mr. Adam's adventures.